Welcome to a special edition of Anglican Unscripted. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm Foley Beach. And we're going to talk about Holy Week and many other things. All right, welcome to another program. I have a special guest with us this week. We're talking with Archbishop Foley Beach of the ACNA. And we're going to talk about Holy Week and many other things. Uh, I see you're, you're, you're distancing yourself. I am. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't spreading the virus through the internet to you since we're, so, I mean, you're, we're closer than three feet right here. This is real close. <laughs> we're zooming. <laughs> it's a new thing. No, um, no, in all seriousness, though, um, you know, the CDC has come out. We know this won't protect us from receiving the virus, but it can help eliminate or uh, slow down at least if you're carrying it unknown, you know, not knowing uh, from spreading it to other people. So, um, you know, we're encouraging folks when they're out in public uh, and they're going to be around other people that they wear their mask. I'll go ahead and take this off so you can see me. There, there we, we go. go. Taking mine off as well. And now I'm going to follow up a little further. And I went downstairs to get my mask. I'm not just going to, you know, let those germs come up here. All right. So it's been a busy Holy Week. And it's only day day one and a half here. Let's talk, uh, first of all, um, most of the audience knows that Bishop Wood went into the hospital uh, with COVID-19, uh, had pneumonia, was put on a ventilator. There's some updates. How's he doing? Um, well, he's home, praise the Lord, but he's still fighting this. And this, mm -hmm. um, you know, just to be released from the hospital doesn't mean your battle is over. And it, it, it um, it was a real challenge to his body, and um, uh, he still um, needs a lot of our prayer at the moment. And so I want to encourage uh, folks who are listening to, uh, to keep Bishop Steve Wood in your prayers. Um, it's a day-by-day, -day, um, you know, inch-by-inch -inch, uh, kind of progress. Uh, this thing is real, can really uh, take it out of you. Um, uh -huh. In the FNA, uh, we've had members who've died. Uh, we have members who are nurses and doctors and ambulance drivers, technicians, all these guys are on the front line sacrificing every day, uh, putting their lives on the line to save people. Um, we have members who are out of work or have lost their businesses. So uh, we need to really be in prayer um, for our neighbors. Uh, this is a tough time for a lot of people. Well, it's a pandemic. And unlike other disasters we've had in America, at least in you know, we're the same generation, in our generation has kind of been locally. You know, 9-11, that was here in America. This is a pandemic covering Africa, Asia, all the continents. And some of the poorer countries are going to get hit really hard financially very soon, if not right, right away. Uh, very, very much so. I've been in touch with some of our, our GAFCON leaders and and I have to say, these guys um, are, are, you know, standing for the gospel. But um, although in a few of their countries it hadn't hit as severe, uh, they are pretty much practicing what we are. So um, economies are being totally shut down, and people are out of work, uh, so they can't buy their food, um, and it's becoming a severe humanitarian humanitarian crisis. Uh, it's, it's in the making. I was talking to uh, uh, one bishop in a country I can't name publicly, but um, he's in the process of distributing um, rations to a thousand families in his communities who've lost their livelihood. Um, and that's just a drop in the bucket, he says, to what's happening in his city. Um, in Singapore, um, they're, they're experiencing a second wave and um, they're enacting stricter restrictions of what they're calling um, a circuit breaker. Uh, to try to stop it. Um, but a lot of our GAFCON leaders, uh, and I hope you'll pray for them as well, they are not just um, leaders of their church, but in many places they are leaders in their, their countries. Um, they, are, uh, they work side by side with the government or the government depends on them. And a lot of them have been put in positions of leadership in the midst of this. And, um, and so the pressure, uh, not only to keep themselves and their families safe and their churches safe, but also to help 
uh, enact and, and, and uh, come up with wisdom for policy for their whole country. So a uh, great opportunity for the gospel. You add on top of this, uh, you know, this is just the coronavirus, but in, in parts of Africa and Asia, the locusts have devoured uh, acre after acre after acre of, of uh, crops. And so we're looking at uh, future famine as well. So a uh, really challenging time in parts of the world. Yeah, these countries were not meant to be shut down economically uh, th with the switch we did here in America. Uh, you look at India where uh, migrant workers were just stranded, you know, hundreds of kilometers from their home when they shut down the public transit. Um, this is really a time uh, for the church to step up. And uh, I'm glad you, we have you in the program to talk about that. Um, one of the things that I see on Facebook uh, this last week is what are we going to do now that the churches are closed here in America about the Eucharist, about communion? How are we going to distribute it? Um, Archbishop uh, um, Robert Duncan put up a wonderful video about spiritual communion. I see some churches are uh, kind of distributing the consecrated elements to their members uh, during the week so they can have it available to them on Sunday. Um, what are some of the ideas that you're seeing out there that are working? Well, first, the bishops, uh, we've gathered and talked about it via Zoom, um, actually several times. Um, I think one thing that, that's all in common is we all agree there's no virtual consecrations of the Eucharist. Um, and, you know, Thank that's you. where people have bread at home and, and uh, the, the priest consecrates through the, through the Internet. We're, we're not doing that um, or permitting that. Um, but every diocese and actually every parish is pretty much in a different context and setting and, and the, the social and cultural expectations that's placed upon them. So it's hard to come up with a one, um, you know, one solution that fits everybody. Um, so we've left it up to each bishop. Uh, what we're doing in the Diocese of the South um, is uh, basically we're encouraging if they're allowed to have communion, um, meaning that their social, uh, I should say, the, the government uh, regulations and the health regulations uh, commend them being able to come to the church or in some way, that either the, the elements are pre-consecrated at a previous Sunday Eucharist and then handed out during the week for the next service, um, or uh, people can come by after watching an online service and have like a drive-through administration of the communion in a, a very hygienic way. Um, and, uh, as, as, as someone put it to me, you know, in our, he said, in our town, you can get a, 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 a big Mac through the drive through and a six pack if you want. Um, so why can't we receive communion? And, and my response is as long as it's done according to the, the health regulations of the culture and, and, and the prayer book. because we, we've got to remember the safety of the people Absolutely. around us. And not just our members, but people who are not members. We've got to love our neighbors as ourselves. It's does that amazing. Help, does that help answer your question? Yeah, it does. It's amazing how our perspective just in six months has so refocused itself on the membership of the church. Uh, you and I, we talk uh, church politics all the time. And we have to deal with the, the church politics internationally and nationally uh, a lot. And... This year was going to be Lambeth. This year was going to be Kigali. Both are canceled. Um, and that's going to, uh, some people say postponed. If that's the word you want to use, postponed is fine. Um, this kind of puts a lot of stuff that we wanted to take care of and encourage each other as brothers and sisters in Christ at an international level on hold, especially with Kigali. It, it, it does, and it, what it does as well is, is um, I mean, because we're having to focus on not only caring for our flocks, but caring for our communities. Mm -hmm. uh, internationally, we want to help, and we're going to do our best to help internationally, but um, right now there are people on our streets that, that need our help, and so that has got to be our priority is loving our neighbor as ourselves at the moment. Um. In the, in the 21st century, the church has kind of let the governments take control of social action and feeding the poor and stuff like that. I see an opportunity here for the church to reclaim 
what was meant to do and to uh, serve as we were, were supposed to the Beatitudes. Do you see that opportunity as well? Well, absolutely. And, and what's been so encouraging and refreshing is the number of our churches that are continuing to, to reach out and help the needy. Um, I was just talking to a priest in Chattanooga this morning, and uh, he was talking about the challenges. They, they feed the poor every day and uh, the hungry and, and help serve the homeless. And one of the issues they're facing is people are coming for their meals, but uh, the police are, are saying you got to disperse because there are too many of them. And so how, how to enact social distancing among those who are needy. Um, and he sent me a picture of, of some of the, the homeless who have tents set up uh, nearby where they, they serve. And it was just, you know, you think, how, how are these guys going to survive because there is no social distancing? Let's That's see. true. But we have an incredible opportunity as the church, and we need to remember what Jesus said, that we need to be taking care of not just our own, but for those who are in need. Um, as First John uh, chapter 3 says, if you have enough to live on um, and someone comes upon you a need and you do not share with him, how can the love of God remain in you? And uh, that's, uh, you know, that's part of who the love of God expresses himself through us as. Let's talk about uh, the role now of GAFCON uh, in helping in this pandemic. Uh, we certainly talked about the ACNA. Um, you said before you guys are not just leaders in clerical form, but many of you are leaders in your own country. Um, what can they do to help their countries? Well, I think um, one of the things that, that, and most of our guys are doing this, is keeping the gospel uh, centerpiece. And we have an opportunity to share the gospel like we never have, that People are thinking about life and death. People are scared. People are fearful. People are anxious. And we have, you know, the answer. And in the big picture of things, um, if, if you know the Lord, if, if you know you're going to heaven and you know that life on earth is just a small part of this thing called eternity, um, our own death is not the end. And, and so we have this incredible hope in the gospel. And, of course, this is what Holy Week is all about, what Christ did for us on the cross and his death and then his rising uh, on Easter Sunday, which, um, you know, the whole aspect of eternal life, what a gift uh, that we have to give to the nations. And so uh, our hope is that folks are going to continue to do that. One of the things we're, gonna, we're trying to do is uh, for those primates who are, and some bishops around the communion who are, uh, live streaming their sermons. We're hope, Gafcon's hoping on Easter to be able to uh, to broadcast those, uh, either live or, or when they're available, uh, as a way of encouraging. Um, we're also trying to to offer um, uh, during Easter our devotional uh, will be um, Ashley Knoll uh, doing some teaching as a way to encourage people uh, spiritually. You know, I think one of the things that we need to to remember. Um, as well in all of this, is the importance of worship and the importance of praise, praise to God in our world. I mean, right now, spirits of oppression and spirits of, of depression, death, hopelessness, anxiety, and fear are just consuming people. And there's such gloom and such darkness. And when we praise and worship the Lord, it disperses all that. When we call on the name of Jesus, it disperses that. And so the importance of us continuing to praise, continuing to worship, no matter what situation we find ourselves in. And so one of the things I encourage not only provincially and, and with our churches to continue to have some kind of worship, but personally having times of praise and worship in your own life every day, where you just start singing to the Lord, uh, singing praise, singing uh, uh, his, who, uh, what awesome a person he is, how much you love him, how much he cares, de de declaring the works of the Lord uh, in worship and song and praise. It's a good bet we're never going to go back to normal, which in my mind is a good thing. Normal was yesterday. God always leads us and will us is into a, a new portion, uh, portion, new every morning. And in as such, I watched the ACNA change overnight from an in church uh, province 
to an online presence. I saw your priests take their iPhones out and try to lead it up against the prayer book and find the right way. And they started doing morning prayer online. I'm going through my, my news feed and they're all doing it. Oh, it was so cool. Oh, I got to pick what I want to watch. And that, that wasn't there yesterday. That wasn't there a month ago or two months ago. And then in the evening, I'm getting uh, ready for supper and they're doing evening prayer. Oh, I'm not going to eat yet. I got to do my evening prayer with the, uh, the folks online and Trinity Seminary is doing it. The, R the Reform Center is everybody's doing it. And it's a, it's a whole new day for a presence online. And then Sunday morning, everybody's uh, broadcasting on Facebook or YouTube uh, their worship services. And the attendance, if you look at the numbers, is pretty amazing. And I'm getting now some emails from people who said, you know, I've rededicated myself because I'd forgotten what this was like. Mm -hmm. I'd forgotten, you know, there's a presence of the Lord in worship. I, oops, I forgot. And we do that as humans. It's, it's our, part of our sinful nature. This is offering the ACNA in many churches around the world something brand new. Well, let me go back to, to what you said earlier about, um, actually, I forgot how you started this. You got me so excited. I talked too long. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, I will say this. The, uh, um, the last two Sundays, I've been unscheduled because my, my schedule got basically eclipsed because of no travel. And um, so, two, you know, three weeks ago, I was at Holy Cross Cathedral, our cathedral. But the last two Sundays, I've been able to um, to go on the ACNA website page where it lists all the online services. And I've just been picking different ones. And it has been so encouraging, so uplifting, so refreshing to see the creativity, the inspiration, uh, the quality preaching. Uh, it has been just so encouraging. Um, we've seen uh, amazing things with, uh, you know, people are using their own websites. Some are using Facebook Live, others YouTube, and, you know, all these different platforms to broadcast their services. Um, down in uh, Americus, Georgia, at St. Saint, Saint John's Americus, they've, they've got cooperation with the local radio station. And uh, so what they're, they're going to do all during um, Holy Week is uh, the, the – the service is going to be videoed, but it's also being uh, broadcast on the local FM station. So people can tune in in their homes and listen. Right. Um, in Roanoke, Virginia, at uh, Church of the Holy Spirit, uh, they <laughs> basically worked out with a local radio FM station. And uh, they broadcast the service, but they're doing it where people drive into the parking lot. They don't get out of their cars, but they come in the parking lot. and. Um, and, and, and participate in, in the service that way. So the creativity has been um, really refreshing. And we look toward Holy Week, um, um, the um, uh, church, let's see, it's Old North Abbey up in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, they're doing Stations of the Cross, and they set it up all on their property and using social distancing guidelines and attendance guidelines, basically given a time where people can come by there's a little bulletin there, and then they walk through um, uh, the different stations of the cross. And then I saw where C4SO, a diocese for the sake of others, they have an online stations of the cross. So it's, it's amazing um, the creativity and the way God is using this. And, and as you said, a number of folks are, uh, are including our diocese, is uh, broadcasting morning prayer and midday prayer and evening prayer and Compline prayer. Um, a number of our churches are using Zoom for Bible studies uh, and finding it very, actually very um, productive, even more so sometimes than being in person because people are willing to talk and participate more. Um, so that has been really, really encouraging. I, I, I absolutely agree. I don't want to take up all your time, um, but is Justin Welby still mad at us? Oh, that's a great question. I don't think he's ever been mad at us. I think he may have been mad at me. Um, but uh, we have a good relationship, and um, uh, we've agreed to disagree on some things. Um, and I let him know um, where 
we disagree. Uh, and he lets me know. And um, uh, other than that, um, you know, I don't know what, what the future is going to behold, but uh, he's got, you know, he's got his um, pot full of problems in the Church of England and in um, the issues he's dealing with just in his own backyard. And um, so, you know, we'll see what happens. I, I do like, um, um, I believe it was Archbishop Manier um, in the book, uh, Orthodox, the future of Orthodox Anglicanism. Um, I really do think that if we're going to see true uh, uh, renewal and reformation and revival in the Anglican Communion, uh, we need to change how the, not the Archbishop of Canterbury is selected, but how the chair of the Anglican Communion primates is selected. And right now, uh, the secular head of, of, of a government, which is only one government of all the many, chooses the spiritual leader of the Anglican Communion. And it seems to me that it's time that we're no longer in a colonial setting, that it's time for the primates themselves to choose their own spiritual leader. Um, and that may be the Archbishop of Canterbury, it may be somebody else. And the Archbishop of Canterbury, who is first among equals, um, would then become an equal um, if someone else is, is selected as the, as the uh, chair of the primates council. So, um, so I, I think we've got to see some serious reforms like that if we're gonna see true spiritual renewal happen. If not, the structures are just gonna fade away and, and new structures will, will emerge. What you said is really important. The old may fade away here and this pandemic may be a spark to that. I can see many churches in Europe, here in America and around the world who just don't survive because the, the people don't come back because they were just relying on a, a, a Sunday attendance to uh, pay the bills. And I think the ACNA is in a wonderful position to take this out uh, and, and hopefully GAFCON can uh, duplicate that as well uh, onto the internet, into the communities to serve. Uh, I think this is a wonderful opportunity for the church that nobody foresaw six months ago. It was on God, this was on God's calendar the whole time, not ours. Archbishop, I need to just say, I don't think that um, uh, ACNA will be immune uh, to that because, um, you know, we, as I said, we've lost a lot of folks um, and we've lost uh, folk, a lot of folks have lost their jobs and we're going to be in an economic uh, real challenge uh, for months to come. And so we'll just see how we do as well. Um, with some of our smaller congregations, maybe some of our large, I, mean, I don't know, but I just don't want to be presumptuous to say it's only going to be the, the long-term traditional kind of churches or denominations that are going to have problems. Uh, it's going to be a challenge for everybody. Um, and we've got to stay in tune with the Lord, walking with him and uh, trusting that he's going to lead and guide us. You can leave presumption up to the commentator. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to thank you for your time this week. I uh, do continue to pray for you all the time in our prayers. Are there anything that uh, the, the audience can pray for the ACNA and, and the bishops and yourself for? Well, I, I thought I would share a quick scripture, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Um, one that uh, came to me uh, about a week ago, and I've, I've really been kind of focusing on it a lot. And I think this will apply to a lot of leaders, but some of you in your own homes may this may speak to you as well. It's from Second Chronicles chapter 20. And uh, the story is Jehoshaphat um, is the king, and he's being overwhelmed. Where He's told that the Amorites and the, the Moabites um, and some of the Minuites uh, were planning to come and attack. And he's overwhelmed. And actually, the scripture here uses that uh, Jehoshaphat's afraid. He, he begins to seek the Lord. He, he calls for a fast throughout Judah and in and, and a prayer time. In the midst of his prayer, verse 12 says this. He's praying. He says, for we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And I don't know how many of you have felt powerless um, over the last few weeks. I know I sure certainly have. Uh, and then what to do, knowing what to do. Now, we, we got some social guidelines and things they've given us uh, to help us with this, but, but as far as the church and leading and, and, and serving the Lord, what, what do we do? 
And then he says, but our eyes are on you. And that's where we've got to keep our focus, on the Lord, on Jesus Christ. He's called us to follow him, and many of you have said, uh, you have decided to follow Jesus. You've sung that song for years and years. Well, one of the things about following Jesus is if we're following, that means he's already in front of us. He's already ahead of us. He's where we're going. And so wherever it is the next few weeks, the next few months that, that he's going to lead us, he's already there. And we need to keep our eyes on him and trust in him. So uh, I just wanted to share that. That's kind of where I've been sinking in um, the last uh, eight or nine days or so. Whenever I lose control, I say, God, you have my attention. You know, this is, this is where we belong on our knees because he's revealing himself in this. Um, hey, Kevin, one last thing. I assume sure. this is going to be aired this week. Um, but um, Good Friday, uh, the ACNA is joining together with the Presbyterian Church of America and the uh, Evangelical Presbyterian Church uh, to, uh, we're calling for a day of prayer and fasting among our members. Uh, to pray against the coronavirus, ask God to, to stop it and uh, to heal people who are sick and, and to provide for people's needs. So I want to invite people uh, to, to plan on Friday, which is a traditional fast day anyway in the Anglican world, uh, to fast, uh, whether it's all day, a meal, um, a couple of hours, whatever it is that the Lord leads you to do, but to fast and pray. And, and during that time, seek the Lord and um, ask him to, to stop this. Uh, virus and, and, and to, to eradicate it in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your time, Archbishop. I'm Kevin Coulson, and you've been watching this special edition of Anglican Unscripted. Mm-hmm.